The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here. Early edition will be re replayed at 10 o'clock. This is 8.06 in the morning on Friday, the 10th of May. And the futures overnight were very strong. Uh, the S&P, uh, both the Dow and the S&P actually had very good sessions yesterday. But the Russell 2000 actually turned out to be percentage-wise a very good move. So let's look at it right now. You've got the Dow futures up 84 now, this is very difficult in a day. There's economic news coming out, all sorts of things. Gold is spiraling higher. So giving this uh, report now at 8.07 a.m. Eastern Time, at 10.07 Eastern Time, we could be anywhere. But right now, the future's up 83. This is a very strong leg a B in the Chapman Wave methodology. Just really quickly, if I can do this right now, I can show you. You try to identify the lowest low bar, count each successively higher peak, alphabetize sequentially, uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. Uh, the object is to get from a buy signal, upgrade it to a buy mode, takes you to at least a peak D, the fourth highest peak, but it can go E, F, and G, or you can get a recycle at D. So D is really important. It's your, your target, and it's your reassessment level. Well, what happened right here? Peak D at 40,358 in the futures back around about April the 1st. And uh, we came tumbling down to the 37,500 level. Now you've started to move back up. All the technicals are very positive. So even if there's a sudden, let's just say, 8.30, another 20 minutes or so, there's an economic news report that uh, just shakes the market up a little bit. This buy mode with the stochastic at 96%, this is the daily chart on the left, and flat, the on-balance volume says a little overboard. You could easily get a 150, 250 point pullback, but it's still a very positive uh, situation. The MACD histogram is still expanding. That's the 0% line. The RSI is still rallying. Uh, that's the relative strength index. The 9 is over the 14. Very strong action. Where's the resistance now? The Dow missed this one by, by 10 points, the target that I have on the left side. In this case, it's the futures, and that would be 39,759. The high today is 39,671. So it's a little bit under that. If you look at the cash, INDU, let's go to that. I'm going to compare them today, uh, the last day of the week. Uh, we're looking at this one having gone to, let me just give you the exact numbers here. That was 39,413, and the left side target high was uh, 39,421. So you've what, you're just seven something points away uh, from getting there. And with the futures up, we'll see if it's able to take that out. Then I can start doing a left side, right side price tie match, trying to find the plumb line for that. And that should take us to next week. Now, in the Chapman Wave methodology, a buy signal upgraded to a buy mode means. It has an implication that there should be at least four higher peaks. That's the obligation of this particular technique I developed decades ago. Well, if this is only a B, we should still have a peak B. That means whatever the high is on this leg B, there's a lower high, the following bar. In this case, it's daily charts. So it'll be the following day. That'll make peak B. Let's just say, uh, for whatever reason, either today, let's just say today goes up and Monday is a lower high. Or let's just imagine that there's an economic report in a few moments' time, and by 9.30, the market is down. And this becomes a peak B. Well, doesn't that say, if you're expecting a leg C, that would be Monday, then a peak C would be Tuesday, and a leg D would be Wednesday, and a peak D would be Thursday. That takes us to next Thursday before you can get at least a peak D, which is where that's the obligation, right? To get you to that. So this is very bullish if the Chapman Wave methodology is going to continue performing like this. And the weekly chart went to a peak D. I, I'll discuss this red A, but it is a, a D based on the futures. YM, there are. That is an official D. 
I put a question mark there because the price went way below the nine period moving average, but that green nine period moving average did not go pink. It stayed green, and now you've sprung to the upside. And that says there's enough, usually there's enough energy to get close to the previous high, but you've got to be careful about that dreaded H pattern. I don't want to talk about that right now, but that would be a failure pattern, and that would take you below the low that was made. Um, and that was the low that was made around about the, what was it, 21st or so? Let me just give you the exact date. Oops. Right, I want you to go through this now because it's, this is a really important moment. Uh, yeah, it's 19th. So um, as it stands right now, this is all very bullish. Let's go to the E-mini. E-mini right now is trading up 15 at 5,254.75. Um, I've got some Fibonacci numbers here. It's kind of uh, ignoring them. Uh, oh, is it? Yes, it's just gone above 618. Okay, so what we're looking at here was a Chapman falling axe formation. That means you can get a break to the upside. And that break, if it's an official break of the falling axe formation, eventually could go like that. So that takes you to just above the um, all time high. Uh, this is the E mini, so I should do it actually with the SP. So let me go to the cash SP. Cash SP says that, oh, I didn't draw it in. It should be like that. Shall we falling axe formation? We broke above it. And there should be a move if you're going left side to each high tackles the left side peak of importance on the left. And that says on this particular technique. Now I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm just putting it in that this is one of the ways I look at it, but I'm always very conservative. I take that measurement from the bottom to the trend line. And then I go to a trough and I say, OK, look, it's already achieved that. Then the next thing I do is I go to a breakout of the moving average. And that says, well, 52.50 would be the area. Well, the all time high was 52.64.85. Well, that says this. I don't know if it's this move now. It, it seems to me getting a little carried away. And that says that there should be a move at some point to the uh, 62.82 level. Hey, I don't like doing that. Uh, did I say 62? I mean, 52, 82 level. Um, I like to go one step at a time. We're already in leg D. D is where other things can happen. Look at the divergence between the Dow in leg B and the S&P in leg, uh, leg B, and this is in leg D. And here's the QQQ, NDX 100, just about to go above into leg D. If you look at the NQ, which is the uh, futures, that's already in leg C. So you've got a kind of a divergence here, look. Leg C in the futures of the NASDAQ continuous contract. This is the NASDAQ 100 right there. If you go to the QQQ, which that's the uh, trading vehicle, that's already at C. And all you have to do is go when one penny above the high of the seventh, which is 441.97. You go to 0.98 and you start your leg D above this chapter with inside track repellent zone. So there's a big ask right now for 10.30 this morning. What what will be and then what will be at the close today based on the weekly charts? So far, everything's positive. Let's go to the IWM. That's the Russell 2000. That that makes a leg uh, D. The moment it goes over 206.15. And if you're looking at the, uh, it's at 206.64 in pre-market. If you look at the RTY, that's in leg D already. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, early edition of the Tiger Technicians Hour. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at DFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Back, Basil Chapman here, early edition. This is 8.18 in the morning, Eastern time. And don't forget, in, uh, in uh, what, 40 minutes or something, Larry starts his... Uh, uh, twice, twice a month. Uh, next session. This is the Friday session. Should come in live. Oh, should be really. In, what a day to do it. This is going to be so fascinating. Um, all right. So that you, there's time, still time to sign in. Um, it's always very successful. Archie Why is the Russell 2000 continuous contract? It is up 7.80 at 2091. This is a leg D. Now, you, if you look at the chart, you say, hmm, this has worked very hard. Stair step moves uh, up a little bit and then a peak and then a pullback and then a little up and then a peak and then a pullback uh, up. But what's really important, this is the first time we're looking at the Russell 2000. That's the small caps. This is the IWM <clears throat> actually participating and on a percentage basis, even now pre-market, it is up 0.36. The Dow is up point. Oh, where did I go? Dow is up 0.24 percent, and the S and P E mini is up 0.31. So it does that every once in a while. It leads, and then it just completely gives it up. And this is going to be very important. Uh, you know, a week ago we went long. Um, it was the first time we've actually even this. It, it, even thought about doing something in the uh, IWM. And the reason being, the pattern, after all that, look at those three ugly weekly, this is the daily, this is the weekly, this is the monthly, look at those three ugly candles, big red candle, big red candle, big red candle, small green inside bar, last week, a green candle starts to see the nine period moving over, deflect higher without going pink, pink would be negative. It's over the 14 period moving average, and today it's making a higher high than last week. Days young, but that's important. And it says, yeah, it could probably have a, 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 a good rally, but that 211.88 high that was made back around about the first or so of April, whew, that's going to be really tough to break above unless there is. Uh, an extension, one a really strong one bar extension, and that is opportunity today. If, if in, in another ten minutes, if there isn't some economic news that sees the market tank, uh, this is going to be the, a chance for it to start moving even higher. It's up against Chubb Wave inside wedge target repellent line, 
that's the, that's the the line that that this green dashed line. Um, in time, it's gone from that high that was made back in uh, early April down to the low of 191.34. I, I could not use the low right here as the um, – I couldn't use I, – I suppose I could use it as a uh, plumb line, meaning the number of bars from the to the downside would equal the number of bars to the right side to get to the same level. But I decided to move it out uh, a bar or two to this peak here so that I – because it looked a little lopsided. Uh, if you're looking at that high, to get to that high – of 211, and we're trading right now at 206.64 pre market. Um, yeah, five points. Wow, I don't know what's going to do that unless today there is a really a, a bad report, meaning that the I don't know whether it's this is, is this the non farm payrolls or something. Unless it, it the expectation is that it is a number and it exceeds that number because or, or it's, it decreases farm payroll. That would mean the payroll decreases sharply. We'll see what happens. But in the meantime, that's really important. The two things that I considered in this particular phase, meaning the last two weeks, is how does the SMH, the semiconductor ETF, Van X semiconductor ETF, how does it handle um, any rally if it's not participating? Well, it actually has participated. And on a purely technical level, this plus sign, I should have done that yesterday, should be an up, that should be an up arrow meaning that it's in a buy mode and it should go to a D. It doesn't have to do very much to do that pre-market. It's up 99 cents a 220.97. The high that it has to do in a concrete high, that is a high that uh, during the day, trading hours, is 222.19, yeah, one penny above the two, two oh, did I say three? 223.18. That's to go to point nineteen. We'll see if that happens. All right. So within that context, now sometimes the report that I'm expecting on Friday is at 8:15 or instead of 8:30. I don't know if it's 8:15. Markets seem to jump a little bit now. The Dow futures is up 101. The S&P. Uh, look at that nice move. Yeah, this is inside. Uh, this is a, a mini channel, and very often you keep you go down. You're trading down in this channel. Bouncing with like a little ping pong ball between the upper line, there's the five minute E mini, S and P E mini. And then all of a sudden it breaks to the upside, or you think it's gonna break to the upside. What does it do? It just reverses quickly and goes down to the bottom. And this is this is the the channel that says you've got to be monitoring all your technicals down here because you can see the MACD is about to turn up. The stochastic has rallied quite nicely. It's just ready to actually pop above, and then we we'll take it to this high that was here at 7:10 in the morning, uh, of 52.58.50, and we're at 52.56.60. So we're going to be watching that. And there's your peak D, and a peak C1, C2 means you've got parallel highs, which acts like uh, a D. So that that gave you that pullback. All right, let's get back to our story here because what do we want to do? We want to get to gold. And gold is just on a spectacular run. And I think it has to do a lot with not just the Middle East, but m many other factors as well. Uh, maybe it even has to do with the dollar. But we'll look at this now. Look, gold is trading up $33 at $2,937. In the 10-minute um, the 10 minute chart that I was notating earlier on, look at this. The gold went to, in the 10-minute chart, this is the gold continuous contract. Look what happened. It went to a peak G, pulled back sharply, and we're going to see if this actually lost this particular rally. So let's get back to our story here. You can see the cup formations forming, the nine period moving average this morning. Now, this is a daily chart. So this bar says, yes, it's turned. The nine period moving average has moved over the 14. It's green. The day's barely begun. We've got to wait until four o'clock before we can say that for sure. If it is, um, then this little pink consolidation phase in this rectangle, making a very gentle cup formation, almost like an inverted head and shoulders, says good action, and it should fill at some point in the next couple of days, it should fill in this ugly candle of the 22nd of April with a high of uh, 2404 uh, and 23, uh, 2404 and 2338. All right. Um, in the meantime, that's a peak D, taking a little bit of a breather. 
walk in the nine period moving average, still very good action in gold. And look at silver. Silver really already took out that uh, Chapman wave. I can get rid of this now. This is called the Chapman wave inside track repellent zone. It was a repellent zone just for a moment. Now I can get rid of it. I like to get rid of anything that's not useful anymore. Uh, it's done its job. Now what we're looking at is the cup formation says, how high can it go? Well, it's the same thing. The ugly candle of the 22nd of April, I'm actually going to go to the bar before the 19th, has a high of 29.29. So that just says that's the area that we can expect, that we can anticipate will be tested uh, either today or sometime next week. If it closes above it, all of a sudden the candle with a long wick becomes a, a target. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, early edition, and we'll get that 8.30 report very soon. And we'll see what happens. I'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. folks so we're back i don't know what the uh, news is right now i haven't got that all in front of me but uh the s p futures are up 18.50 holding very well steady if there was any bad news it would have been a sudden slide to the downside i remember i was talking about this five minute chart and i said very often in this long narrow channel there's a sudden spike to the upside to try to tackle one of the left side highs. Well, what happens is it does that. And you've got to be very careful it doesn't go back into the channel because that could say that it wasn't able to hold in this new territory for it. 
and it's now going to have to build a base, and that's what we're going to watch very closely. So, yes, now there's a little bit of a pullback. That's nothing. 17 up, 17 was 18. It was at 52, uh, 58. Now it's at 52, 55, three points. Uh, it's what happens next that's going to be really important because the Dow futures are holding. They're all holding okay. But I want you to do this now because I want you to see what happened after that particular report. Now let's go to this. So we've got the gold contract has pulled back a little bit from the high of uh, 2385.3. So 2385.3 now at 2373, up 33, still a very strong move. Silver is the same thing. Silver is trading up um, 37 cents at 28.74 in the continuous contract. You've got high-grade copper. Uh, this is a big spike to the upside. Whoa, nice. It did 4.745, and now it's at 7.663. Um, this is, I'm going to, for the moment, I'm going to call this a G, but that instant restart says I've got to consider that it's an alternate count, so I'm going to give it a G slash C. Um, and we'll see what happens after this. It's an Oleg D in the weekly chart. Uh, this is really great, a great move in high-grade copper. I wanted to also do um, Bitcoin, BTC. Remember, we're looking at BTC, and I said it's in a – after it made that high – I don't know if it's still that because it gets smoothed out. 75,000, whatever the high was on the 14th of March, I've got 75,185. Um, we had those uh, those parallel moves. I love it when it's in exactly the same angle to the downside. We did, it did it three times, and I said, this is in the consolidation. Usually you don't have three times exact. It, it, so this is the one that's a little suspicious. And look, there it is trading in a sideways move. Now what I will do is, I've got this big rectangle. Now I said it's trading in the band. Once it goes below it, it means that if it comes back in, you've got to see if it can stay in this this rectangle in the in the 60 thousands, or it slides back under the sixty thousand level. That's going to be important. So Bitcoin is in a consolidation of the really spectacular move. Look at this cup formation. Went to a new recovery high. Was that an all-time high? Yep. At that 37,000 level, 73,000, 75,100 level. And now we're pulling back, just consolidating, making a cup. Maybe it's a handle pattern, but we're watching this because it is a fairly serious um, time lapse after such a spectacular move. It's gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine weeks of consolidation, making lower lows and lower highs. So I'm just saying that Bitcoin, the GBTC, this is a Bitcoin fund. You can see it here. It's Making low lows and lower highs, it's it's taking a breather after a very well earned breather after the spectacular move, going from the uh, single digits at some point in 2023 up to uh, the GBTC went all the way to the 64 level. That, that's fabulous. The last high was 58.22. Now let's do this. We're looking at um, I want to see bonds. So bonds are down a half a point at 116 and 10 30 seconds this to me is the clue that says i'm anticipating that sometime next week because of the chapman wave leg b that we've got and that you you can't get a peak d until sometime midweek that it could fail uh but it's it's everything there is powerful enough for me to say that i think it's going to be in place but you've already got um you got d's like in the iwm is there, so is there going to be rotational leadership? I don't know. All I can say is that with bonds, and now I'll go to the TLT, because many of you don't get the futures, but you do get TLT. This is the iShares 20-year Treasury bond ETF. Hasn't yet made that leg D, and it's down 28 cents today, 90.35. 90, 90 it's really struggling, and that's been my issue, that um, I've considered that yields are going to just be stuck in a higher level for quite quite a while. I don't know if they're breaking out to the upside yet or anything, but they, they're kind of stuck there. And that stuck says you've got to watch this very closely because it does impact things like a Toll Brothers, which has had a, a sharp pullback from the 130 area down to the 111s, and now it's back at 126. So the, the hint that yields might be coming down has really helped Toll Brothers after it made an all-time high, um, as I say, in the 130 area. And here it is. Pulling back, pretty pretty steep pullback, and then a really good rally that's going to peak A, peak B, peak C, 
And here it is at peak D, a little double top at peak D, and it's trading pre-market down seven cents at 126.41. But builders, you remember I spoke about this for months. I've been talking about, whoops, builders is the company manufacturer, BL, BLDR. There it is. This is called Builders First Source, Inc. Building materials, manufacturing uh, um, co uh, components. Peak D in the monthly chart, peak D in the in the weekly chart. Remember, the peak D is your objective in the buy mode. That's where other things can happen. And 214.70 was the all-time high on that very day that it got a 209 round number low. Those round numbers have been potent weapons to be looking at what happens on highs and lows. So this is a pullback from 214 down to the 200 period moving average of 161. Had a very nice pop yesterday. We'll see what it does today. Right on that 200 period moving average is now the magnet line support. So that's in that building area. I, I'm forgetting something I wanted to do. Um, oh, I wrote it down. I've got it now. Yeah, so there are some stocks in areas, for instance, I wanted to go to, yesterday we were looking at natural gas, and I said, hmm, natural gas has had a really nice move to the upside. First time that it's tackled the 14-period moving average in the weekly chart since it broke down uh, back in January, and actually since the nine-period moving average crossed negative back in, I think it was September, when it was in the 3.50 area, uh, that nine-period moving average hasn't gone green once, and even now it's not green. But yet, you've had a nice pop to the upside, so you need to look at UNG because it's the wrong season for this. But wow, that has been a really nice move in percentage terms from just under 14 to almost 17, 16.92. It's trading down 36 cents right now. I still do not want to get into this uh, UNG because uh, it seems to me that this is more a reflex rally. I haven't got a signal yet to say that there's a sustained move to the upside. That's natural gas. So uh, UNG is the United States Natural Gas Fund. Let's look at oil, because the whole thing in the Middle East has seen oil skyrocketing to the upside. It hasn't. It's only gold that's really participated. And that, I think, is more the nervousness, the tension, the go-to icon that is always there when there's trouble in the Middle East. Gold seems to always want to move higher. So crude oil is up 45 cents. So this is a little mini bounce off the 200 period moving average. Look at that weekly chart, lower lows and lower highs. So uh, this is kind of a mixed market. Not only that, although the fact that our return is in the semiconductor area, uh, there's been a really good bounce. What's next? That's the question. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, early edition of the Tiger Technicians Hour. Check out my opening full daily newsletter. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. 
TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, so let's see, we were talking about that five minute chart that sometimes it can pop out of that channel, but if the channel is strong enough, the price, if it can't hold above it, it goes right back in. And there it is, right back in. Now it's challenging the base, the bottom part of it. I, I have a feeling that this market today might have just gone a little too over optimistic and that we don't close at the high of the day that we have some kind of a consolidation intraday but it's after three o'clock that after 2 30 that you really get the sense of where it's going uh just fabulous moves and i don't like an entire day's worth of trading pre-market because that's uh, like gold is done that usually just says hey a little too much enthusiasm the eel on the downside or the upside now i had a question here about generac so I had to check, was this a Generac that has the generators? Uh, Generac is a leading energy technology solutions company that provides backup and prime power generation products for residential and commercial and industrial. Now, with all, the, uh, with all the hurricanes, I mean, I can't imagine living in hurricane, ter hurricane territory. It must be quite terrifying. I mean, you get used to it, but uh, you, whew, you just never know where these things are going to go. So as I'm looking at it, 139.40 pre-market up 24 cents, uh, pre-opening that is, I'm looking at this and saying, hmm, you know, if you are long, I would just stay long. I look at this every year and for some reason, it doesn't always perform the way you think it's going to. Um, look at this last year, that was just down, down, down almost all year. Uh, the, oh, 2022 and then 2023 hurricane season look right here in the middle of look at this here we are this is hurricane season right so we want to get to July so it had a lovely rally in May uh, in April going into May started in April just a little bit no that's where it formed the base and then it had a great rally in June huge rally 149 to 100, uh, 107 to 150 Two makes a slightly higher high, can't get that nine period exponential moving average to move up, uh, and then it makes a lower low. So, then and it's all over in July, uh, in August, which is what you'd expect. That's kind of the season, right? And here it is just starting to move to the upside. So, I'm going to suggest if you are long, stay long. If you're looking to get in, I would start a small position right now. I, I'd actually make it a split position. I'd even think of it as possibly three, but at least two positions. Start the position right now because it's underneath the, the last high that was at 140 right there. This is a daily chart, 143.30. And um, look what's happening. So C, D, E, oops, E, and F. And then it makes a G. It looks like this could be an A, B. Yep, that's a B, and that's a, a F slash C, but then it fails. It goes underneath there, so that becomes an F. That becomes a brand new A and a brand new B. Yeah, that's what I would do. I'd have a, an entry point here, and I probably, I'd, I'm not sure if I would have more than, um, I'd have about a three or four point stop just on this position. I, I'd give it a little room. It's more how it acts on a second day, if it pulls back once, watch that second day. But most importantly, you want to see how it can tackle this upper level. And then I would add on any pullback, give it two or three weeks, or maybe not even two, three, maybe the end of next week. 
if it has any pullback and it can get to 130, between 136 and 135, then I'd add another position. And then I'd, that's, that's all I'd do. Then I'd have just something ready to add if it starts to break to new recovery highs. Why? Because it looks like this is the season for Generac. Okay, I hope that helps you. Uh, worst case is if it, if it takes out 130 in May, it's just not doing what it normally does. That's not a good sign. Next question is, um, oh, oh, got it. Okay, it wasn't for me. Um, yeah, so let's just do this. So the GDX, I didn't do the GDX earlier on. Whoops, I typed it in the wrong place, I think. GDX, there we go, GDX. A GDX is about to break the 3575 high that was made back in April. Got a cup and a kind of a handle here, and it's moving. This could go one to one to the upside, and that just says the whole area of it's a 3590 pre market. I'm suspecting that this area here is going to see a, another pop to the upside, and then you have a, another digestive phase, unless there's something happening here in gold that says no. Gold is, is the, the Middle East is is is, a, is just a hotbed of, of of nervousness. Obviously, gold is the play, and if that's the case, then gold is going to go very GDX. The miners are starting to move, and this inside track repellent zone in the monthly chart will see a, a close on a weekly basis somewhere in the thirty six eighty to thirty seven fifty area to say, wow, finally, after all this time. I've broken this multi year. Look at this. August of 2020, 4578. And here we are, uh, almost four years later, three and three quarter years later, and we haven't broken this downtrend. And that's going to be very important. And if you're looking at time, yeah, it's got a little bit of a time sequence to it. But I think this is more uh, uh, significant to gold per se. Okay. Let's see. Uh, I had a couple of. Go. Oh, let's just do this. So I said, look at this. NVIDIA. Has a round number, 974 all-time high, plummets to a low of the 19th of April at 756.06, but it has a 762 round number close. What does it do? It rallies to peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, and has a little bit of a pullback after hitting, I would say that on the 6th of May, hitting uh, 922, 7, 56 to eight uh, to 922. That's a pretty good run. And now it's digesting those gains. And that's why I'm saying, I think between the bonds, the yields that is, and the semiconductors, this is a rally that has the potential for something to go wrong. I don't know if it's next week, but I'm looking at the um, in the in the Chapman Wave methodology. I'm looking at this and saying, we'll see if we can get to a D in the Dow, and then that's usually where we start to prepare for some kind of reversal pattern. I don't know if that's the case. I'm just saying that that's what I'm looking for. Unless the semiconductors really participate well, uh, the, um, the NVIDIA is up 11 at 899 right now. Unless it really takes out the high of 922.20 that was made on the 6th a few days ago, unless it can take that out significantly to say, hey, I want to retackle my 974.00 round number high. That's something I'm monitoring very closely. And this is just one, but there are a number of them. Um, and there were a number of round numbers. I, I don't think I can do them all. I, but I was asked about Meta. Meta has had a massive decline from 531.49 uh, back in April. It, it slumps to 440.50 low on the 25th of April with a 421 round number open. And here it is trading at 476.95 up at dollar 53 in leg C, having almost full the gap. The gap low, oh, oh, that one. The gap low is 484.58. Oh, it's got a long way to go, 475. Let's see if it actually fills it or it suddenly stalls, and that's going to be important. So meta platforms, one by one, they're not participating. Look, Microsoft, our oh, Microsoft, I should say, um, Right up against the inside track repellent zone, uh, it, the nine period finally crossed positive. It's up 90 cents today. It's really not participating the way it used to. I think it's stalling. If you look at Amazon, Amazon right now, that's that's one of those that's actually doing well. It's in all leg D at an all time high. Um, right now it's at 189.30. I'll be back in a moment for the final segment. Don't forget Larry's Friday session live coming up at nine o'clock.
The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom Daly as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. As we get into this final segment, uh, this is the pre-open. Uh, it's the early edition of the Tiger Technicians Hour. Let's look at this. You've got the Dow futures coming back a little bit from the high that was made. Uh, let me get it right here. YM trading up 79. It was uh, much, much higher earlier. It's in the 120-minute uh, chart. It's made a, a leg E. We'll see if that turns into a peak E. And I'm just going to tell you right now that this is fabulous action, but it's a little overboard just on a purely emotional basis. I can see that. Oh, I didn't even go into the VIX index. Let me just quickly do this because it's going to be important. The VIX index has a left side, right side price time match. 1240 was the low of the 21st of March. I think we're going to get close there, but it's really, this is the date that I'm watching very closely, and that is the 17th of May just in terms of this left side, right side price time match. Let me just do this as well. In the E-mini, for those of you trading, I'm just going to say to you, watch this level here very closely. The 200 period moving average in the five-minute chart of 52.45. Uh, if that gets pierced, it says that the market won't close at the highs. It's going to struggle a little bit. And watch that time period after 2.30 this afternoon. But uh, so far, all the action has been pretty good. Just a little bit, I can see a little bit of overbought, and I'm saying there's a rotation going on where those really big caps are starting to, uh, they will uh, get, 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 uh, they, they rotating so that you do, look, Amazon had a great move, but you're looking at Microsoft just trying to struggle, and that's how we're seeing it. And that's the same rotation that I'm seeing in the uh, semiconductors, and if you look at something like a Micron, uh, look how badly that's done. 
and yet look at uh, something like NVIDIA. So that rot rotation is going to go through the different areas. And the question came up about uranium. Uh, uranium, as I see it, oops, this is the one minute chart. I don't need that. I need this one right here, just as we kind of wrap it up. So uranium, R-U-N-M, has held very nicely. I still say this could be the surprise of 2024, the, un the unspoken surprise that the spot uranium miners ETF actually holds really well and does make a new uh, all-time high, um, maybe this summer. We'll see what happens. So have a wonderful weekend, everyone. I will see you Monday. Check out my opening call. I've had some really nice positions on. And I will see you on Monday. Thanks for being here. Stay tuned. Uh, we've got... Uh, Tigers, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side by side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tigers Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side by side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors.